Happy Friday to the extended Kablam community. Thanks to your copious complaints. Last night's security breach was found to be market testing. Aren't those guys upstairs so proactive? Many thanks. It may still be November, but it's never too early to start your Christmas shopping. Or next year's Christmas shopping. Have a kablamtastic day. There seems to be no follow-up from the crazy events of last night. It was a small miracle the doctor had disconnected me while we still could. Black puffy rings circled my eyes. Through my blurry, sleep-deprived vision, I could just about make out some familiar faces. November 18th, boxes packed, 3560. Satisfactory. Do stretch goals down. That's that workaholic, Zerlin, and cyborg Joji on the balcony. Yeah, no, I got a mate. Three day delivery time. I don't know how they do it. After his late night delivery, it looks like the man has replaced his arms entirely with branded carriers. The new robotic appendages made him look half man, half forklift. Sorry, love. Almost mistook you for a kablam man. Jibed Magwood as she passed him on the conveyor. Yeah, yeah, stay jealous. <laughs> he replied, grinning through the sting of his anklet. I wasn't in the mood for office small talk. As he passed me, his smile dropped. Oh. Someone had a busy night, yes? <laughs> Excuse me? We all know what you try to do, traitor. I thought we were family. He tottered as he passed. Soon he was gone, chatting away to the next person on the line. That evening, I teleported back home and crashed on the bed out of exhaustion. Moral and physical. Hang on. Did I just call this room... home? The doctor lounged in the accumulated cardboard boxing, like a cat. She'd attempted to build a castle out of the packaging, but clearly had gotten distracted halfway through. I imagine this is what kids look like on Christmas Day. No luck finding the TARDIS, then. We've got a blue post box, a board game called Blue Box, a vintage evidence tin used by police, and a certificate that says I own the digital rats to the image of a 1960s police box, but that's about it. And we still haven't paid off the rent! I turned to the ceiling and screamed at the artificially intelligent heavens. But you know that already, don't you? Me inner Yorkshire trying to break out of its cage. The doorbell chimed again. I don't even have the energy to go to the door anymore. The doctor sadly returned with a small rectangular cardboard box. Very much not the TARDIS. Let's hope it's bigger on the inside. More bubble wrap filled the messy floor as the doctor unfolded a miniature police box. Dimensions fit for a small child dollhouse. A tiny wooden diorama of a TARDIS. That day, I decided I would burn this place to the ground. Log that. November 21st. Boxes packed, 933. Unsatisfactory. Consider yourself warned. Borrowed the Sonic today. Just to have a nosy around. Last time we were here, the doctor could change her ankle bracelet to assign herself any job available in the complex. I should have thought of it sooner. Making the most of Magwood's room shuffling, I can find openings to escape the work floor and go walk about. The old janitor role was one the system had no problem accepting. With my doctor plan in place, I waited for my cue and bonked off work. Janitor Khan reporting for duty. It was honestly shocking how easily a quick wave of the Sonic could excuse me from abandoning my post. What was originally planned as a stealth mission turned out to be a surprising amount of fun. The system seemed to just let me be 
as the teleport zapped me all over the compound. It wasn't the most variety I'd seen on my travels, but a couple of abandoned areas like the old front desk and the break garden definitely rung bells back when I explored the facility all those years ago with Ryan. Wow. <laughs> Had it really been years? This place ran on its own time, literally. Warehouse One was Charlie's old cupboard. Untouched and unmoved, the curly janitor's living space was easy to find. The only door boarded up in an otherwise pristine, empty warehouse. Inside... Well, inside things that the doctor should know about. Immediately. November 22nd, boxes packed, 400. Lamp privileges revoked for 48 hours. Ominous, piped up the doctor, who had been sat at the terminal all day watching the news on the flat screen TV she'd ordered. I could tell from the new empty boxes around the place that the search for the TARDIS had been unsuccessful. Did she really have nothing in her pockets for some daring escape? Being bedbound just wasn't her style. She caught me, looking amongst the cardboard debris. Oh, those. So, without the premium loyalty membership, it looks like the red parcels take an unspecified amount of time to reach their destination. Blue parcels, that's ours over there, can get delivered by hand in under 10 minutes, but only every other Friday. Yellow parcels are like red parcels, except that they come with import tax and have a time frame on them. I'm trying blue and yellow ones. And how long is the person packaging on the yellow? Five months and three days. <sighs> I'm not having that. Well, if you get your box packing numbers up, you might qualify for some staff perks. Janice from Middlebatch says the packaging numbers are just made up. I counted. I know I did more than 400 boxes today. The doctor wasn't convinced. Why would the system lie? Replied the doctor, eyes back on the screen. Algorithms are math. Numbers are as trustworthy as it comes. She absentmindedly adjusted the head on the small action figure on her desk. A purseman with a giant head and two black, empty eyes. Delivery. Is that a Kablam Man bobblehead? No matter the need, you can always safely Kablam it. How much should that cost, then? It came discounted with the TV. The Doctor looked straight past me. Recently, I had started to wonder how much the Doctor was really trying to escape. She looked positively domesticated, absorbed in the light of the TV screen. It was unlike her, and she felt more distant than ever. Listen! I can get us out of here! The janitor's closet! The janitor's closet is filled with- Hang on, turn the volume up. The doctor jumped off urgently and ran up close to the TV behind me. Instead, focusing her attention on the news bulletin blaring in the background. She always did this. Always when I had something to say. I turned round, ready to raise my voice in tired frustration until I saw the screen myself. An emergency broadcast of a familiar ship in the black of space. All of my other concerns disappeared upon reading one giant red word. Cybermen. A cybership just landed on Kondoka. Doctor, I... How long do we have? I don't know. It's a big planet. Forget about the bills. We've got incoming. November 23rd. Productivity log. 881 boxes packed. Do you value your job security? Guess what? Today was a day like any day. On the brink of a disaster, yet everybody shirred up to work all the same. The walls of the factory seemed designed to cut out the outside world, but there remained a palpable dread in the smoggy air. I wanted to scream at them to get out, to run. None of this work mattered. Not when there was an assembled grab bag of human parts here for the Cybermen to pilfer at any moment. After months of feeling distant, today, 
I have the doctor in the ear. Clever thing managed to relink the brain sync to the TV. This way, we can talk on my unique brain frequency without the company listening in. Once my shift's done, I decide to play janitor again and pay another visit to the late Charlie's cupboard. Once the doctor sees what I saw, there's no way she'll be able to stay so neutral. The disused cupboard remained illuminated by the glare of flashing buttons. Sharing brain space with the doctor was odd, intrusive. Stray thoughts were leaking over from both sides. On my end, I could feel a boredom, a deep, deep sadness from years gone by and the palpable guilt that set in as she rifled through the ex janitor's belongings. Poor Charlie. You know I tried to save him, right? You know, last time we were here. She said in the depths of my head. Glitter bombs. That's what I would have done. Give the world a good fright. Glitter everywhere. Boom, boom. Make the news. Point made. They'd all had words in the TARDIS about it afterwards. Ryan, Graham and I. Things had been strange after that adventure. My thoughts went back to Ryan, who'd left us just recently to pursue an activist cause of his own. A few days before he'd left, he'd brought up the Kablam topic at Graham's dinner table. Ryan did this sometimes, trying to figure out what cause Charlie thought he was fighting for. What does it matter? He was going to kill millions, I would say in return, the police badge coming through. But he insisted. Ryan would tell me about some of the union types he'd encountered in his warehouse days. Charlie struck him more as a grass. Ryan reckoned people like Charlie didn't care how bad conditions got, just so long as it was people like him who were in charge instead. It was a good point. Graham kept the peace and reminded us that the kid never actually got the chance to explain. So, I guess we'll never know. I didn't know you lot had chats like that afterwards, the doctor said, circling in my thoughts. I could feel that the boys were still a sore subject. I do have experience overthrowing the odd naughty computer, you know, Yaz. Enough to know when there's potential. In the grand scheme of things, you got to understand the Kablam system was a newborn. For an AI, this is infancy. Sure, I could take the place down overnight, but it needs to learn its lesson and evolve. Because that went so well, I said out loud. Surprising myself. It deserves that chance. There might be more humans on the payroll, but this place is worse than ever. I was clenching my fists. I think I'd been holding this argument in for months, and linked as we were, she could sense it. Sometimes I don't have the answer. I can fix bugs, but not features. But the Cybermen? You're going to intervene to stop them? Absolutely. Sometimes you don't have to pick some weird battles. The doctor didn't answer. Instead, she put her mind to Charlie's workbench and got to work. This grid is what Charlie must have used to connect his explosive charges. Disconnected, but easily repurposed. It's pretty rudimentary stuff. Know the right chemical presence in the codex, use the resources outside, and you could mass produce Molotov cocktails from scratch. Can we use it on the Cybermen? Kablam! Kablam. Productivity logged. November 25th. Boxes packed. Zero. Goodbye, worker Yasmin Khan. The Cybermen attack at dawn. Classic scene. The Doctor stands atop of a towering workstation, making a desperate final bid to the invading legions. Wrapping around the walls of the complex, the bubble wrap explosive cocktail awaits its command. The Doctor and I stayed up all night, constructing the detonator from our television's remote. You will soon know no fear. Upgrade is inevitable. We are superior. It's all going to plan. But like usual, the plan is filled with holes. <laughs> like now, for instance. I'm crouched behind a pillar. 
because there's nowhere left to hide. Humans will form an orderly line along the factory floor. You shall not hide them from us. Kablama kept the human workers on site to the last minute. The system wants nothing to do with this incident, meaning it was down to me to stage an evacuation. As I say in job interviews, I'm a fast learner. The doctor had infiltrated the work floor in the Kablam man's disguise, but that helmet wouldn't fool a Cyberman. All we had to fend him off was the explosive charges and the bluff that we'd detonate with all of us inside. If they take the bait, on paper, there's very little the Cybermen can do but jog on elsewhere. And it seems they might. I don't risk poking my head out, but the cyber leader's gone silent. Since the doctor appeared and announced that the only ones caught in the bubble wrap chain explosion would be us and them. It's one of her better ultimatums. She dons the person's cap with a confident smirk, waiting for their unconditional retreat. Silence. Then a stomp. Then a familiar digital chime played. I couldn't believe it. The Cyberman was booting up a terminal. Hi, visitor 366. How may I help you today? The Cyberman scanned his hand and began engaging in deep, silent process with the operating system, inches from my face. The Cyberman scanned his hand and began engaging in deep, silent process with the operating system. You won't find the human's whereabouts in there. Seriously, what do you computers have to gossip about anyway? The Cyberman released its hold on the screen and returned to its legion, disregarding us entirely. Transport rigs accessed. Human units located. No! I screamed, unable to hold in my terror. The Cybermen were unperturbed. Computer system deemed non-aggressive. Human workforce obedient. The survey shall be amended. Organic units are categorized as low urgency. It marched back to its legion. Their compliance ensures a predetermined, stable course to cybernetic control. It announced. It turned to the doctor. Current labor conditions are deemed acceptable. And off they went. The Cybermen bloody up and left, onto the next world, the second anticlimax in just as many days. They'd invaded Kandurka, its moons, and left, apparently liking what they'd seen. Well, that went well. Where to go us? said the Doctor, who I heard was not too fooled by her own beaming smile. She sonicked the nearest teleport rig and got it operational again. Now with an empty factory and a vacant, surrendered system, maybe we'd have freedom to find our belongings manually. Don't worry, Yaz. It'll all be up and running in no time. Who knows? Maybe they all can blag a few holiday days from this. Do you think that's enough? Tomorrow it'd be filled with Madwood, Joji and the rest. A whole planet grateful for what little this huge company could give them. When I saw it all like this, the factory, with all its sad, abandoned posts, I had to wonder, who was there on the planet who could afford these products they slaved away over? How could a building this size remain sustainable? Your patronage is welcomed. Goodbye, tenant number 9230. Hang on. Doctor... If this planet is full of teleport rigs, what's the point of the Kablan men? She looked at me confused. No, think about it. What business sense do robot delivery men serve when there's teleports everywhere? Even our dingy little box room had a teleport rig. I went to work on it every day. Oh yeah, I guess it's just a done thing, isn't it? She wasn't getting it. A curse at the excess. 
I cursed as I realised this complex system that exploits its own parts at every turn. It wasn't even well designed. It wasn't even intelligent, artificially or otherwise. It was just there. Turns out, while we were out saving the planet, we'd missed the delivery. Sod's law. Now save with the evacuation, by the way. A human conveyor belt off-world, that's genius, that. Julie from Final Check showed me. Thank her. Huh, I guess it's really all about who you know. She quipped in a turn, so ignorant, I stopped in my tracks. <sighs> you know, when we came here the first time, with Ryan and Graham, they called it the year... 135. That's a Kablam corporate calendar for you. 135 years AD plus. It's the year 145 here. Ten years. Ten years and they haven't improved a thing. History in action isn't always fast. I had seen this woman stand up to every evil under the sun. The person who was always on my level, as if she was inside my head, just wasn't getting it. It doesn't last forever, Yaz. Doctor, they named a historical period after a company. Fine. Let's do a history lesson. It's the year 260 plus. Kablam gets bought out by the RCS in a hostile takeover. They install AI governments the world over. The company try to expand to Dalek territory in the same year and wipe themselves out. AI takes the blame. End of an interplanetary money system. That's just a waste. Oh, yeah. Centuries of wasted time down the drain, but that's the thing I've been trying to tell you. The rise and falls of capitalism are quaint. It's the rise and fall of the Berlin Wall. The dinosaurs, the Beatles, they're all the same to us. 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 Empires, errors, they come and go like, like passing trains to us time travelers. See, they don't need us to stop them because it's already history. You might as well savor the surroundings while they're here. She huffed. Like I'd let her down. So it'll probably sort itself out. That's your plan. Way I see it, a concrete jungle is still a jungle. <sighs> As she ranted, I saw someone confused. Someone who felt ineffectual when confronted with real hard change. I bit my tongue and stood down. Now if we've stopped squabbling, we've got a dog to catch. She said as she re-entered the warm, effortless comfort of the TARDIS console room. Goodbye, Kandurka. Goodbye to all the sleepless nights and shame you made me feel. In service of nothing. A planet-sized shrine to nothing. As the TARDIS gasped, its final dematerializing gasp, I grabbed the Doctor's matching Persman cap and swept up the Kablan Man's blazer from the console. Want this put in the wardrobe? I said, suggesting a peace offering. Yeah, now that's a shout. Could be funny for a costume party one day. There's a spare mannequin in the back wardrobe, she said, as if eager to brush off the event of the last six months. I spun on the hills to leave. And yes? I am sorry. We got stuck, and I could have done more to get us out. If it's getting stuck with you, it's not so bad. Look, let's skip the big speech and go help some people. If I could always fix things, I would. Our minds weren't synced anymore, but I knew what she really meant, regardless. I miss him too, Doctor. I donned the cap and tipped it to the pilot playfully, making sure to cover my face. The cap found its new home in the funny costume party section of the ship. It felt like a lifetime since I'd been alone with the lure home of the TARDIS. Slowly, I pulled out something from the Doctor's black jacket. I knew what I was looking for. It was a long strip of bubble wrap, rolled up around the TV remote. It was the detonator we threatened the Cyberfleet with yesterday. I rolled it around in my hand. The air bubbles were intact. There's a lot to consider here. I think of how small the past month made me feel. 
I think of all the small people trapped in the big waves of history who never got the time or the space to think of how things could be better. I think of what a big responsibility this lifestyle is. But mostly, I think of how tempting the urge is to always pop bubble wrap. I reckon there's always something you can do. Ryan realised that. And then he got out to facilitate some real change. The kind the doctor sometimes convinces herself she's not capable of. But if I make that factory small, if I just remember it's an empty building with an empty, stupid purpose, even someone like me can do something about it. With a large inhale and a wicked grin, I grab the bubble wrap detonator with both hands and twisted. In the now far distance of space, Kablam finally lived up to its namesake.